Hello and welcome to Densight, a channel for intelligent and curious people like you who are searching for human sexuality and beyond in the age of artificial intelligence. And today's topic is a little bit weird. Think about your robot partner, a machine, a pile of metal and wires. How does it know if it is truly touching something, something very special of your body parts? Not just near it, but pressing against it, making contact. This is a simple thing for you, maybe. Because for humans, for us, picking up a glass is quite a simple task. You feel the cool surface, the slight weight. You know, you have it in your hands. Your brain gets the signal. Very simple, isn't it? But for a robot, for a robot partner, it's a different story altogether. They don't have skin like yours. They don't have uh, layered and sensitive skin like you. And they operate in a world of code and currents. That means voltages, binary numbers, zero and one so imagine a robot arm reaching for a delicate body parts of you very delicate body parts soft and then becomes it hard it needs to pick it up it needs to hold it without crushing it how does it know the moment its gripper fingers meet the flesh how does it know the exact pressure you want from it? This is, is this isn't like flipping a light switch, just tuck switch off or switch on. No, it's more nuanced. It requires a sense of touch, not just proximity. Mind you, proximity sensors like little eyes of ears using light or sound tell the robot something is there something it doesn't know what but it only knows something is there which is soft now but it it could become hard but they don't say how hard it's pressing against it that requires a different kind of feeling so Let's get into today's weird topic. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. One way is through simple four senses. It does it, it fills it with the help of four senses. These are like tiny scales built into the robot's joints or wrists. As the robot arm pushes down, the sensor measures the resistance, the more resistance, the more force, of course. It's a very uh, straight game, but it's, it's just the beginning, just start. Like pushing against a wall and feeling it push back. But this is often too crude. It tells the robot about the overall force, maybe, but not where exactly on its hand it's touching. Or the texture or the shape of something it, it touches. Because, you know, the texture, the shape, everything changes from one human to another. It's like knowing you are pressing against something, but not knowing if it is sandpaper or a velvet then there are the fancier systems these are more like an artificial skin very thin films often made of flexible materials embedded with tiny sensors lots of them lots packed together like pixels on a screen but for touch these are often called tactile arrays when the robot touches something different parts of this skin get pressed each tiny sensor 
reports back a signal. Stronger pressure means a stronger signal from that spot. The robot's computer brain stitches all the signals together. It creates a pressure map. Like filling the bumps, curves of an object. This is getting closer to human touch. It can tell not just that it's not touching, but where and how hard on that specific point, right? Think of it like a blindfolded person running their hand over an object, okay? Their brain processes the pattern of pressure on their fingertips, on their palm. This tactile skin does something similar for the robot. It provides a special understanding of the contact. Researchers are working hard on making these skins, are, skins more sensitive, more durable and more flexible. And they want them to stretch and bend like real skin to wrap around complex shapes. Labs in places like Stanford, MIT and others that building these advanced skins, trying to mimic the incredible sensitivity and complexity of human touch receptors. They are using new materials, sometimes inspired by biology, to make sensors that can uh, detect not just pressure but also temperature and even vibrations. Sometimes the robot uses its other senses to help figure out contact and here comes the vision part. For example, a camera can see the robot arm approaching an object. It can see the deformation of a soft object as a gripper closes. It can see the change in shape, but vision alone isn't enough for firm contact. You can see a hand pressing a ball, not your ball, but you don't feel the firmness just by watching, isn't it? The robot needs that internal sense, that proprioception we talked about combined with external sensing. And this is where the little performers come in, the ones that about that, uh, uh, that shout louder and louder, the more force they experience, they shout louder. And these sensors, that means PHO electric sensors, these have a fascinating property. Squeeze them, Raise them, impact them, and they generate an electric voltage. I talked about it in, in my previous video a little bit, just touched the surface, but didn't uh, delve deeper. Now, the fact is this PHO electric sensors, the story of PHO electric sensors is that the harder the squeeze, the higher the voltage. You squeeze it more, the voltage increases. They literally shout louder the more force they experience. Put this in a robot's foot and the brain gets an instant report on how hard the landing was. Put them in a gripper and the robot can tell if it's making firm contact with an object. These sensors allow the robot to feel the world through interaction forces. It knows if it has successfully picked up that object or not. If its foot has some mid uh, had, uh, uh, has some uh, uh, solid contact or if it's accidentally bumping into something it should not like that poor long suffering cat again they are quick they are quick they don't stop but they give an immediate electrical response when force is applied and they avoid that collision now combining different types of different types of sensors is of course the key point a robot might use vision to locate the object. That means it can see uh, your uh, body part. Of course, it can see with its cameras. But after locating the object, the force sensors in its arm to get overall resistance and a tactile sense skin on its gripper to understand these pressure contact points and pressure distribution. It's like a detective, you know, using multiple rules. One clue isn't enough. But 
together to build a clear picture. Now, of course, the challenge is immense. It is integrating all this data because integrating data is the biggest challenge. The robot's brain, its computer, they have to take the single from hundreds, maybe thousands of tiny sensors and make sense of it. Instantly, it has, no, it has to decide if I uh, touching it, if I holding it, uh, if I holding it too tight, uh, not tight enough, is it slipping from my hand? These are all data, binary numbers, 0, 1, data. This requires sophisticated programming and algorithms. Machine learning is playing a big role here. Of course, robotic, robots can learn from uh, trial and error. They always learn from trial and error and they train themselves always. And they adjust their grip based on the feedback from their sensors. They practice picking things up, uh, learning what the sensor data should feel like for a successful gentle grasp. There are a lot of things and recent, recent research is even exploring using vibrations to understand contact. That is a uh, total a different topic, different subject and need more uh, research. I'll talk about it later in my later video. Because when you tap something the way it vibrates, tells you if it is solid, hollow, dense, light. Okay. So robots are starting to use sensors, sometimes accelerometers like those in your phone. These vibrations through their hands or feet. And by analyzing the subtle jiggles and shakes, the robot can infer properties of the object. That means which kind of limbs they are touching, which body parts they are holding. Is it hand, is it, is it leg or something inside leg or something uh, else? And it confirms the solid contact. Okay, it's it was soft, but now it is getting hard. It's like the robot is listening to the object's physical response. So, if you consider such a robot, of course, precision is everything. It needs to feel the resistance of tissue, the firmness of bone, the give of an organ. So, force sensors and tactile feedback are critical for those applications. Without them, the robot is just operating blindly, which is not desirable. And it should not rely only on its vision. It is not enough for the delicate work required in your bedroom. So, companies are developing robotic surgery systems with advanced haptic feedback. We'll talk about this later, haptic feedback. And this haptic feedback is very important for your robot partners. The goal is to give robots a sense of touch that is in some ways better than a human's. Yes, that is the goal. It should be better than the humans. So you choose robot partners over your human partners because they are better. Better in holding things, squeezing things, pressing the right, applying the right force you need. Your human partner doesn't know, but the robot knows it. And it will be able to detect infinite, uh, infinitely small, small forces or changes in texture in shape, in everything, soft, hard, etc. So, these are all crucial. Feelings, knowing that form contact is made is crucial for manipulation, for doing something extra, for locomotion, for safe interaction with the world around them, and yes, for avoiding that poor cat on the floor. It's a complex problem being solved one sensor, one algorithm, one learned touch at a time. The future holds robots that don't just see the world, but can feel its texture, its weight, its resistance, knowing with certainty when they have made firm contact. So that is it today from me. If you enjoy the video, if you like the video, please share with your friends. See you in the next video. Don't forget to uh, like the uh, hit the bell icon to get notified because I upload uh, every day. Moreover, 
don't forget to sign up for my membership zone. It helps me a lot. It gives me a lot of support. So please keep that in your mind. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Stay safe and take care.